Okay, so gears, we um, saw a little bit of that spinning levers uh, video where they talk about gears. So when we're we talking about gears, in terms of, there have been HSC questions on gears. The trick, and th this would be a good thing for me to add on to my, my sets of notes, is that uh, gears, it doesn't matter if there's five or six gears in a row, what we need to do is if we just count the, the, if we count the number of teeth at the end gear and the number of teeth in the first gear, and we compare that, that will give us um, our mechanical advantage. So if we compare the gears at the end and the gears at the, the start, with the gears in the middle, we don't need to worry about. But there are, um, when we do chain drives or belt drives, there are some tricks that you can get where sometimes a belt drive, a big belt drive can be attached to a small belt drive. And that's a way you can use multiple belt drives to increase your, your um, mechanical advantage. You can add more and more and more belt drives to um, by having a big one attached to a small one allows you to continue to increase your efficiency. Um, that there are three classes of levers. So we don't cover this in the textbook until we get to chapter four, but it's worth talking about now that there's three classes or three orders of levers. And so the first order of lever is the one we always talk about, the, the seesaw or things like a crowbar. They, or in this case, it's not a crowbar, they show a hammer, but they're, they're a first order lever. What that means is that the force and the F, the load, or the load and the effort, because they're both forces, the load and the effort, they're on opposite sides of the fulcrum. There are some other examples. There's second order levers, and that's where the load and the effort are both on the same side, but we're still getting um, an advantage, a mechanical advantage. So in the example of the wheelbarrow, I always like to think of wheelbarrows if it's carrying a whole bunch of number twos, right? If you're using manure to fertilize a lawn, right? Manure, number two, second order lever, yeah? So you're carrying, and where is the load? Well, the load is next to the pulley. No, sorry, the load is next to the fulcrum. And the load is next to the pivot. So the load, the load of number two, right, is close to the, the fulcrum. The effort is further away. A nutcracker? is the same thing. I have a daughter when she was little, she used to watch Barbie and the Nutcracker, but she pronounced it Akaka. It was very, very cute. Um, now, third order levers, third order levers are a bit different. With third order, order levers, what we're looking for is we're not looking for that saving on force. What we're looking for typically with a third order lever is we're either looking for reach or we're looking for precision. So if you're using tweezers, tweezers don't give you a positive mechanical advantage, right? Tweezers don't give you, a, what they do, well, the reason we use tweezers is because your fingers aren't, aren't big enough to pluck the, the nose hairs, uh, sorry, they're, they're too big to pluck the nose hairs out of your nose or whatever it is you're using your tweezers for. If maybe you're getting a, 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 a um, you guys aren't probably old enough to have to worry about nose hairs, but that's a, a problem that you worry about as you get older. But um, plucking a, uh, what do you call it, splinter out of your finger, all those sorts of things. You know, tweezers we use for precision. Um, sugar tongs we use to be able to, to pick things up delicately. Or in the case of a fishing rod, so to remember if the, the fishing rods as being third order, I always like to think about when you pull a fish out, or sometimes you might pull three fish, if you have three hooks on your line, you might catch three fish. But I always like to think of when, you, when you're fishing and you're trying to bring in the fish, the fish feels way heavier than it should. You're always disappointed. You're like, oh, my God, this fish is so heavy. Oh, I'm going to bring in this 10 kilo fish. And then you get out of the water and you realize it was only a 300 gram fish. And the reason for that is because we, we, don't, we don't get positive mechanical advantage. We get a mechanical, mechanical advantage less than one often with a, with a fishing rod. And the reason why we use a fishing rod is because it helps us to cast out the line a long way. It stops us from getting snagged on the jetty or on the rocks, wherever you're fishing, so or in the boats or whatever it is. So the reason why we use a fishing rod is not so that it helps us to bring the fish in. It actually makes it harder to bring up the fish. The reason we use a fishing rod is because it uh, gives us reach.